Hello, this is lesson, uh, excuse me, unit six, lesson five notes. This is uh, graphing and analyzing rational functions. These are a little more complex than what we did in day five, um, but we're picking up where we left off in terms of horizontal asymptotes and x and y intercepts, etc. So we're looking at some terminology here to help you kind of analyze without having to graph it. So there's these terms, bottom heavy, balance, and top heavy. That's just referring to the degree on the in the numerator versus the degree in the denominator. Okay. So in this first case, if you have a bottom heavy function where the degree in the bottom is larger, your horizontal asymptote, we use HA to abbreviate, will be Y equals zero. Okay. Always. All right, balance. The degree on top is the same as the degree on the bottom. So we do this. It's a little bit different. Horizontal asymptote. It's going to be y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. Coefficients. In this case, that's two-thirds. So that is your horizontal asymptote. If it's top-heavy, the, de the degree on the top is larger than the bottom, you will not have a horizontal asymptote. You may have something called a slant asymptote, but we're not going to ask you to find that. Okay? So that is horizontal asymptotes. Finding discontinuities, all right? Factoring is going to matter here, okay? You talked about vertical asymptotes last time where you have a value for x that makes the denominator zero, okay? Um, that's called non-removable because when you factor, you could factor the bottom here of this one and nothing cancels. It's not removed. Nothing is removed. You, at these points, at plus or minus one half, you'll have a vertical asymptote. Okay. Remember, this is called a discontinuity. Okay. These are all discontinuities, vertical asymptotes and holes. All right. A hole, again, also a discontinuity. I'm having you guys write these for emphasis. These are both discontinuities. That's important to remember. You can have both. You could have a hole at one spot and a vertical asymptote in another. You could have both. You could have one or the other or, or neither. Okay? So you just got to, well, excuse me, you'll, you'll have uh, one or the other. Okay? Um, so let's look at when you'd have a hole. So this factors, some people are still having trouble with this. All right, you've just got to remember how to factor these perfect cubes. All right, there's no way around it. You just got to remember the pattern. All right, and this is the denominator. These cancel, they are removed. I removed part of this function. So this means there will be a hole at x equals negative 2. So instead of having a full that dotted line with the vertical asymptote, you'll just have one spot in the graph, maybe something like this. Where x is not defined. Okay? That's called a removable discontinuity because we canceled part of the denominator. Okay, those are discontinuities, removable, non-removable. It's important to make that distinction. All right, we'll also have to find x and y intercepts. That should be a review, so we'll walk through that as we go. All right, so let's graph some of these. Some of these uh, we'll need you to do by hand. We also want you to be able to plug it into the calculator and analyze it. Um, but for today, I'm going to walk through both of these different types of graphs so we can see all the different properties and how to go through the steps and how to identify all these uh, characteristics. All right, so the first thing we're looking at is horizontal asymptote. 
Again, look at the degrees. The degrees are the same, also known as balanced. So we look at the leading coefficients. It's 2 over 1. So that means a horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Vertical asymptotes or holes. So we've got 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. All right, we can't cancel anything. A lot of people still want to cancel these x's. You can't do that because you're adding and subtracting. These are terms. If these were factors, you could cancel. If it was 2x um, over x times x minus 2, something like that, then we could cancel these x's there. All right, but this, this is not like that. We can't do that. Nothing cancels. So you're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Whatever makes the denominator 0 is where you'll have a vertical asymptote. If, you had, if we had removed x minus 2, it would be a hole at x equals 2. But we didn't. So this is a non-removable discontinuity at x equals 2. All right, x-intercepts. x-intercepts is what is going to make the numerator 0. equal to 0. Okay, we don't want the denominator equal to 0 because that makes the function undefined. We just did that up here. We want the numerator to be 0, so we do 2x plus 1 equals 0. All right, and you're going to get negative 1 half. Okay, so that's the point, negative 1 half, 0. This is, again, this is why it's important to remember intercepts, x-intercepts and y-intercepts are points because you're actually going to graph them. Okay, you can't just say one half, that doesn't make any sense as far as plotting the point. You've got to be specific. All right. Y-intercept. Y-intercept is when x equals zero. So you make x equal to zero. All right, zero times two is zero, plus one over negative two. All right, so this is the point 0, negative 1 half. Yeah, you got the same ones for both of these. That's a coincidence. That's not always going to happen. All right. So let's put on the graph what we know so far. All right, we know there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1 half, and negative 1 half, 0. All right. Remember, horizontal asymptote is reflective of the end behavior. It just tells us what the graph is going to approach as it goes really far to the left and to the right. Okay. So this just describes as it goes towards negative infinity. We've got to figure out what's going on on the right side of the graph, so we're going to plot a couple of extra points. All right. Again, this vertical asymptote, x isn't defined there, so this graph has to stop. It doesn't, it doesn't actually reach that point. It gets infinitesimally close, but it never actually touches it. It's not defined at that exact point, x equals 2. All right, so we need a couple of points to the right here to see what's going on. So let's look at what happens when x equals 3. And when x equals 4. All right. 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. So 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 2. You're going to get 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. So when x equals 3, y equals 7. Do the same thing for 4. 2 times 4 plus 1 over 4 minus 2, you're going to get 9 over 2. It's about, that's 4 and a half. All right, so let's plot these points. 3, 7. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. All right, again, the vertical asymptote. The graph has to approach that vertical asymptote but not touch it. It's got to approach the
the vertical asymptote, but not touch it. All right. So domain and range, you need to exclude where the function is not defined. In terms of the domain, the function is not defined when x equals 2. So if we've got to say negative infinity to 2, parentheses, that's important, union 2 to infinity. We excluded x equals 2 from the domain. Range, we're also excluding 2, but this is in terms of y. So while it looks the same, it means something different because this is range. All right, your end behavior here is just going to be what your horizontal asymptote is. As x goes all the way to the left, it's approaching 2. As y goes all the way to the right, excuse me, as x goes all the way to the right, the graph is approaching 2. So your horizontal asymptote should be the same as your end behavior. All right. Okay, so if you feel comfortable with this, go ahead and try the next one. It is a little different. Okay, but you're welcome to try it. Uh, if you're not quite sure, you want to go through the steps again, uh, just stay with me and we'll walk through it. So number two, f of x equals 1 over x squared minus 4. All right, so vertical asymptotes, or, or horizontal asymptotes, excuse me. So look at this. Uh, this is a 1 on top. There is no x, so that means x to the 0, right? So this means it's bottom heavy. So that means a horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Vertical asymptote, um, well, let's factor this just to check. Okay, I can't cancel anything. So there won't be any removable discontinuity, so there's no holes. There is a vertical asymptote at x equals plus n minus 2. So you're going to have two vertical asymptotes. X-intercepts. Again, look at the numerator. Well, there's no x in the numerator. The numerator always equals 1. There's no way to make this function equal to 0. Y is never going to equal 0. That should be understood by this. Now, there are some cases where the graph could cross a horizontal asymptote. Um, but we're not looking at that right now. All right, so x-intercepts, there aren't any. It never touches the x-axis. It's impossible in this case. Y-intercepts, x equals 0. So I've got 1 over 0 squared minus 4. So the y-intercept, when x equals 0, y equals negative 1 over 4. All right, well, let's plot our points and our asymptotes. So y equals 0, x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2, and the point 0 and negative 1 fourth. That's about right here. All right, so you've got to find what's going on in the middle here. All right. Now, we already stated that there's no way it could have an x-intercept, but we, cut, we need to see the shape of this graph and where it goes. So we need to figure out, let's do one point to the left of that first asymptote. Let's do two points in between, and let's do one more to the right, just to get an idea of where this graph is. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just talk through these. If you need to write these down, pause it and, and check your work and see where these end up, that's fine. But I'm just going to talk through them. So negative 3. All right, well, negative 3 squared is 9. So 1 over 9 minus 4 is 1 over 5. All right, well, if negative 3 squared is 9, positive 3 squared is also 9. So we're going to get the same thing for positive 3. Pot, so that means 1 and negative 1 are also going to have the same y value. All right. So let's put in let's put in 1 for x. 
you're going to get uh, 1 minus 4. That's negative 3 on the bottom. So these are going to be negative 1 third. All right, well, negative 1 third is a little bit further away. A little bit farther away than negative 1 fourth. So that's about here and here. So this graph is going to do that. Okay, I know it looks like it touches the x-axis. It's not supposed to. As long as you draw your asymptote, we'll understand that. Uh, and, and you write that there's no x-intercepts. We understand that you know that. That's fine. All right, so then let's, what's going on the outside of these vertical asymptotes? So negative 3, positive 1 fifth is about here. 3, positive 1 fifth is here. All right, end behavior. You know the graph's got to approach 0. Okay, so in the green there, that is your graph for this function. You can plug it in your calculator and check it if you want. That's something you should be able to do. Make sure that matches up. Let's check the other items here. So domain, we've got to write this in three parts. It's negative infinity to negative 2, not including negative 2, to 2, 2 to positive infinity. The range, we're just excluding 0 from that. Your end behavior should be whatever your horizontal asymptote is. All right. Okay, so go back and make sure you got everything filled in. Let us know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.